Good day everyone and welcome to my channel! In May we finally hit the goal of 100 coffees on my buy me a coffee account and it means that it's time for me to give away a custom doll commission. Each coffee equals one entry, so I gave every coffee its number from 1 to 100 and then let an app pick one number out of 100. And the coffee number 55 won! Congratulations to Cosmic Death! I contacted the winner via the email she left for me there and she said she doesn't have a set idea for a doll yet, but she gave me a list of optional ideas that I could use to create the design. I am a big fan of challenges like Inktober, so I immediately felt super excited to work on this project, especially because I liked all of the things from the list, such as mysterious seductive monsters, don't you judge me, horns or traditionally devilish demonesque features, many fingers or many long fingers, <laughs> symmetrically spaced duplicated eyes, dark academia skeletons, skulls, anatomy aesthetic and or dark occult style garb. Base colors, black, indigo, purple, fuchsia, bone white, accent colors, fiery orange, gold, copper, burnt amber, muted forest green. Vibes demure or reserved, potentially volatile, otherworldly. For example, Scarlett Johansson's character, the female in Under the Skin. I made a quick sketch, so I don't forget all the ideas I had while reading this list, but I was changing the concept along the way because I kept getting other ideas as well, and by the time the design was finished I had enough random ideas for like two more proper concepts, I think. Anyway, let's get started and I'll explain everything along the way. This doll will consist of three different dolls, for the main part I'm going to use Katie Noir because of her skin color, and Skeleta will be a body part donor. I definitely wanted to include Skeleta in this project because I know that Cosmic Death likes skeletal dolls. But when I saw the female in the list, I decided to crossbreed the female and the skeleton and make it like a humanoid alien with very fluid shapes that smoothly transition into skin and bone limbs. I had two of these exact same Skeleta dolls in my collection, but I decided to sacrifice this one for body parts because first of all she had deformed ties, I guess because they were made of softer plastic and a broken elbow. So I don't think she has much collector value, especially if I have a second Skeleta without these defects. For this project I only need the parts that are below the knees, so let's quickly chop them off. I think I should have cut them a little bit lower, further away from the joints to be safe, but what's done is done. Now I'm going to connect Skeleta's legs with the main body, first on wires and then with super glue. Before applying the glue, I'm also going to make sure the legs are the same length. While the glue was drying, I decided to add some demonic features, like making the heels a part of her feet. Like this, her feet will look complete without shoes and nothing will cover the skeletal parts. Then I smooth out the transition between the two types of legs with epoxy sculpt. Combining the female and the skeleton gave me some xenomorph vibes and I immediately thought about works of H.R. Geiger, so I've decided to seek inspiration from his works for further transformations. For example, I wanted to add some textures to the spine and found this perfect reference. I really liked how these round implants highlight the spinal cord, so I've decided to make a simplified version of this texture on this doll as well. I 
I have to admit I am pretty much into skeletal dolls lately and there's a few projects I want to do soon, like I have one skeleta with a broken neck. That one was my first attempt to make Hone Onna, but some stuff went wrong, so now I want to repurpose that body for something else. Plus, recently, someone in the comments suggested to make another interesting ghost for my yokai collection, where I could use the spine I have left from this project now. And besides these ideas, I have another three project ideas where I could use Skeleta as well. Unfortunately, I don't have enough Skeletas, but I'll look around and see what I can find on eBay. The other day I watched the question and answer video from Catmillion Studio and someone asked which of her dolls is her mom's favorite and her mom couldn't choose one because they all look so pretty and I immediately compared it with my mom's reaction to my dolls. <laughs> when she first saw my dolls she was like what the hell is that? <laughs> Why do you have to make these abominations? Can't you make pretty dolls? I explained to her that I find pretty dolls boring and there's plenty of people who share my opinion but it turned out that she already started to panic and called my brother to ask him if he thinks I need some help and what could have happened to me to create such a thing. My brother is a very chill dude, he said. Well, life has mercy to no one. <laughs> then she calmed down and decided that I'm just expressing myself. And recently she called me as well uh, while I was working on one of my previous dolls and was saying something about doll faces and I was like, oh, check out this one, her face is rotten. <laughs> and my mom was so silent for a bit and then she went like, you know, I can tell you one thing. If one day you go to hell, you won't be scared. I don't know if that's a compliment or not. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. <laughs> Of course, she meant it only half serious, but I really liked the hell part. For some reason, it made me even more inspired to make demonic things. After all, we all want to belong somewhere, right? I didn't decide how her outfit will look yet, and I wasn't sure if it will cover the chest or not, so I decided to cover her breasts with metal plates. I knew that I can't use much fabric here because I wanted to keep the back and at least a bit of her ribs open. So I thought even if I make a dress in the future it won't cover the chest completely and it would be nice to have some additional metal details looking out. And if a dress won't work out these plates can work as a part of the outfit on their own. Sounds like a win-win. When I was done with sculpting, I sanded her body, removed dust and oil with pure alcohol, sprayed it with transparent primer and now I'm going to paint her body black. I only applied one layer of paint to get a solid base on her legs and body and then I had to apply one layer of black pastels as well. Because her arms are vinyl and enamel paint doesn't work on vinyl, it just stays sticky and won't dry. I sealed the pastels with Mr. Super Clear sealant and now I want to dry brush her body with black metallic paint as well.
Next up is her head. It's interesting that back in the day Operetta was my least favorite doll because her face always felt disturbing to me. I don't know if it was her factory makeup or what, but she looked really creepy. <laughs> I used her head last year as well for my Borg Queen and I still couldn't appreciate her because I made a mistake with the head shrinking and it got a bit deformed and started to look even creepier. But in January, when I was shrinking a bunch of different heads for my stock box and did everything correctly, it turned out that Opheleta is actually very pretty. It would be nice to compare two heads before and after shrinking to see if it was the shrinking that gave her justice or she was always like this, because I honestly don't remember anymore. Right now, I feel like her piercing eyes and sharp cheekbones make her look otherworldly and that's exactly what I need in this concept. You heard of this? Hmm? Cheek back. No. I start with adding armature for her future horns and covering the scars with epoxy sculpt. I'm going to sculpt the horns with epoxy sculpt as well, but pure epoxy is too heavy, so first I will wrap some foil around the wires and then use epoxy to smooth it up and add details. I drilled like four holes in her head before I could find the perfect spot for the second pair of horns, so I think humanity is really lucky I didn't become a surgeon or something. After sanding, I cleaned the face with alcohol as well, sprayed it with MSC and painted everything black. It made me feel a little nervous, because usually I start the face up with blushing and adding shadows and it doesn't make sense when the face is already pitch black. The things I could do were pretty limited and I was scared that the face might look boring. A cosmic death mentioned symmetrically spaced duplicated eyes in her list and I thought it might look interesting if I add some symmetrically spaced rhinestones on her forehead instead and highlight them with some glowing tattoos, how about that?
It was my first time working in reverse, so I didn't know what would look good and had to correct and redo some things from time to time, especially the eyes were challenging for me. At some point I felt like eyeshadows don't suit her and I just removed them with sandpaper. I didn't want to paint over them because there was a few layers of paint already and I was afraid that the texture might look through and make the eyelids look not as neat. Luckily, when you work with a shrunk head and one solid color, sanding works wonders. And I'm going to make an accent on her irises instead. Since she is a space demon, I thought it would look cool to make her eyes look like little galaxies. People in the comments were asking me if I seal iridescent paint or not and I think it's a really good question because it depends on the effect I want to achieve. For example, this time I wanted the iridescent paint to look a bit more subtle, so I sealed it with one layer of MSC and added some metallic highlights in the end. Bastard. <laughs> Later on I'll add more rhinestones, but for now I'll keep it how it is to not overdo with decorations. After all, adding them is always easier than removing. Now it's time to put her head on her body. Shrinking her head made her neck hole smaller as well, so first I need to make some adjustments. Removing some material with the Dremel will also heat up her head and make it easier to put it back. When vinyl is warm it becomes flexible again and the epoxy sculpt doesn't work with flexible materials, so I wasn't surprised when a piece of epoxy chipped off, but don't worry, I can easily repair it with black epoxy again. It's better to not glue anything and just remove the disconnected bead and replace it completely. Freshly mixed epoxy is soft and easy to blend, I'll just fill up the cavity and it will look as good as new. I think white hair would bring a nice contrast and complement her tattoos. I have three different types of white hair in stock, just white hair, white hair mixed with transparent hair, which I planned to use first, but I recently bought this white hair mixed with transparent and metallic hair for my Yuki Ono doll, and after comparing the three I figured that white with metallic looks the best on this doll as well. So metallic it is! I'm going to glue this hair directly to the doll using glue for jewelry. I don't know exactly what type of glue it is, but it's pretty strong and that's what you need for nylon hair. At first I didn't paint her scalp, because I thought that glued hair would cover it anyway, but experience proved the opposite and I had to quickly go back and paint it white. 
It brought me another concern, like what if acrylic paint will create a fragile layer between the head and glue and the hair won't hold as strong. But seeing how this glue melted my nail polish made me realize that nothing can stop this toxic bastard. What a relief. Here's what I've got, I think she looks great from the back, but from the front she looks a bit... bald? <laughs> I was wondering if I should add some hair to the front, maybe, but like this she looked even more like Lord Elrond. Our list of allies grows thin, this evil cannot be concealed by the power of the elves. I started panicking again and even thought about replacing her hair with dark blue to reduce the contrast so she won't look as bald, however, there was an easier option, like braiding her hair. If the hair won't be as visible from the front, it will look like a part of her hairstyle. I gave her a pretty simple hairstyle, but it already made everything look so much better. The outfit took me a lot of thinking, at first I wanted to make like a mesh dress with gathering, but it didn't look as good, because in this scale it's really hard to get neat gatherings. Everything immediately looks too puffy. Luckily, last week I was browsing for fabrics for Yuki Ona. That lady is a real troublemaker, I swear. And I found these metallic chiffons as well. I ordered white one for Yuki Ona and there was a blue option as well. And I bought it just in case I needed it in the future. The white chiffon didn't work for Yuki Ona, but this blue one turned out to be perfect for this space demon lady. Life works in mysterious ways and never goes as planned, I guess. So I tried around and figured that she needs a skirt and something on her arms, because they look too bare. So I decided to make just sleeves and a skirt for her. At some point I started to worry that her outfit might look more like something for belly dance and this thought really freaked me out. Don't get me wrong, I like belly dance, but it's the wrong place and time for it. So I just went to bed and came back to it the next day with a fresh mind. 
I planned to make slits on the sides of her skirt from the get-go, but now I figured I need to make the blue panels even thinner and a bit shorter to get away from that belly dance vibe. A thin blue line looked too poor though, and I thought what if I add another layer of black chiffon underneath so that there won't be as much empty space and yet it won't drag attention. I also tried to distress the fabric with the lighter to make it look even more demonesque, and I think it really helped to get the mood right. Before this day I've never thought that the line between demons and belly dancers is so easy to cross. Now let's put everything together and see what else is missing. I think her neck and belly need some details. Let's add a matching necklace and some chains.
I like how the chain is highlighting the ribs now. Looking good so far. I guess some hair accessories wouldn't hurt as well. The least I can do is to cover them elastics with trim. And at last I can add some rhinestones to her face. When I start decorating things it's always hard to stop, so I always try to add decorations in small portions to not miss the moment when I should tell myself. Stop it. Get some help. And I guess we finally reached the point when we can check out the end result. This project was very special to me because it was a really fun challenge where I had much creative freedom but enough directions for me to not get lost in the endless pool of options. I would like to thank the winner for sharing this experience with me and bringing me so much inspiration. Just between me and you guys, I felt really really nervous working on this doll because it turned out that the winner is also an artist and her works look absolutely stunning. So what I'm saying is that you should definitely go and check out her Instagram, Cosmics Gift Shop, and your jaw will drop as well. But only after you give this video a like, of course, because I really need your help in growing my channel. As usual, I await for your feedback and questions in the comment section, I will be happy to talk to you. And if you like, you can also support my channel further by buying me a coffee. For every 100 coffees I reach, I'll make a giveaway and the winner will get a custom doll commission. All of the links you can find in the description box. Thank you very much for spending your time with me today and I hope to see you soon in my next video. Bye!